and to welcome you to the webinar. Uh, we thank you for taking some time out of your day to join us. Uh, the topic today is Crips Connect for D Trade. Uh, we will be discussing government and defense related regulations and licenses, and also how Crips Connect for D Trade will enable you to send and receive information between your SAP GPS system and D Trade. Um, just a quick introduction to our speaker. Uh, Luis Gomez is our speaker today. He is a solution architect with CRIP. Uh, he has been an architect for over six years. Um, he has experience in application development and over four years experience with GPS and implementation, configuration, development, and maintenance. On the next slide, I will just go over some quick housekeeping tips. On the slide, you'll see an image of the GoToWebinar panel. Uh, there is a box for questions. We will make sure to address all questions at the end of the webinar. If you do have questions during the webinar or at the end, feel free to type them into the questions box. And we'll try to address all questions at the end of the presentation. If we're not able to get to your question, we will be sure to follow up with you afterwards. Or you can contact us um, outside of this webinar and we'll have our contact information at the end of the presentation. Now on the next slide, I'll just go over um, just a quick introduction to Crypt and who we are before we dive into the presentation. Uh, Crypt is a global SAP consulting company. We do focus on the supply chain areas such as GTS, warehouse management, transportation management, and some HANA solutions, as well as our own products. Um, we have offices worldwide and also work with customers across on the next slide, um, I'll just go over some of our products. So this is an example, just a high level overview of some of the CRIP products. Um, as you'll see, we have CRIP Visibility, which is a reporting and analytics tool, CRIP Cloud, which enables you to put any of your solution, SAP solutions on the cloud, uh, CRIP UX, which is our usability and um, user interface solution, CRIP Concierge, which, which is a a maintenance package, and Crip Connect, which is what we're focusing on today. A subset of Crip Connect is the Crip Connect for D Trade, and that's what Luis will be speaking to. And on the next slide, um, we will see this is just a quick glance of some of our valued customers. So I'll hand it over to Luis, and Luis, um, you can go over the agenda and then jump right into the presentation. Great. Thanks, Haley. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to attend. Uh, my name is Luis Gomez, and I'm a consultant at Crypt Inc. Uh, I've worked with a focus on global trade and supply chain for the last six years, a lot of, it, a lot of which has been uh, with U.S. exports. So, so today I'm going to talk about one of the legal regulations impacting defense-related articles and services. Uh, today we're going to discuss ITAR compliance and D-Trade. Uh, now, I realize I assume you are experts in this topic, but we're going to give a brief overview to level set. We'll then talk about how our product can help in solving some of these issues around compliance. And finally, we'll give a brief demo of our tool. Okay, so in recent news, uh, we've been hearing a lot about a certain foreign country who was uh, able to acquire more military technology than we in the rest of the world would like them to have. Uh, the goal of ITAR is to prevent these sort of things from happening and keep military and defense technology from falling into the wrong hands. Okay, so ITAR. ITAR is defined as a complex set of regulations from the U.S. Department of State that affect U.S. importers and exporters who deal in military, aerospace, nuclear programs, or any other commodity or transaction that is deemed to relate to U.S. national security. To conduct business with any ITAR-controlled product or service, various license types are required from the Directorate of Defense Trade Controls, which is part of the U.S. Department of State. These licenses are for various types of processes, including a shipment of hardware, equipment, transfer of expertise or assistance, and technical data or information. Each of these categories of controlled processes can require one or more IDAR licenses to conduct a complete transaction. So a single export process may require more than one license to be applied for, for the same line item on the same shipment. The three main categories of licenses are hardware licenses, of which there are several types technical assistant agreements, and manufacturer license agreements. Agreements are required to provide a defense service to a foreign person authorized to manufacture of defense articles abroad, 
and to establish a distribution point for defense articles for subsequent subsequent, subsequent distribution. Um, we'll discuss these licenses in more detail later on, but first uh, we're gonna talk about why it's so important to be proactive in maintaining ITAR compliance. Uh, one of the things that complicates ITAR compliance is the DND export rule. Uh, this expands the definition of an export to include transferring information to a foreign national. Uh, this can be something as simple as the conversation. Uh, this is one of the things that's critical to keep in mind in regards to maintaining legal compliance. Under this rule, many actions that would normally be thought of as an export do fall under ITAR regulations. And the government has demonstrated in recent years that they take this rule very seriously. Uh, there, there's a case I just read about on the news uh, where someone violated ITAR by uploading a, a 3D printed gun to his website. And the re-export rule. This is another important rule to be aware of. Um, the re-export is defined as the transfer of defense articles or services to an end use, end user, or destination not previously authorized. And the U.S. is the only country to exercise extraterritorial jurisdiction over re-exports, while other countries will assess the risk of diversion when considering granting licenses. If an ITAR-controlled component is install installed into an end item, that end item is also going to require an export license or further sale or use. What this means essentially is anything touched by an ITAR-regulated component will also become um, ITAR-regulated. Uh, here we can see the comparison of the penalties for violating ITAR com as compared to EAR. Uh, we can see the penalties for violating ITAR are pretty substantial. And the civil fine actually just went up last year from uh, half a million dollars to just over a million dollars. And they're gonna keep updating that every January. And uh, this is gonna apply retroactively to for, for past uh, offenses. Uh, but we're not going to dwell on this because we're going to be proactive and perform our due diligence in maintaining legal compliance. Okay, so it's pretty clear we need to stay compliant, but how do we know what to be compliant on? Uh, to help with that, the government publishes the USML or the United States Munition List. Uh, this contains a list of articles, services, and related technology designated as defense and space related. Any article, service, or related data found to be on the USML requires an export license issued by the United States State Department to be exported. Uh, there's 21 categories of articles, and they include things like firearms, ground vehicles, aircraft, and classified articles. We're going to need to make sure products are classified. Um, this is generally the first step of a compliance strategy with GTS. Um, so GTS has a number of tools to manage classifications, including the ability to mass upload classification data and the ability to update these as they're changed by the government. Uh, we're gonna need to have our products classified to the proper USML articles, not just to be aware of a compliance requirement, but also to use when we apply for the licenses later on. Okay, so once our products are classified, there's reporting tools in GTS that can help identify which products are relevant for regulation, uh, then we'll apply for a license. Uh, GTS can be used as a single uh, point to manage these licenses. You can have nested licenses such as a DSP-5 within an MLA, and you can track the values and quantities in your transactions to these licenses and maintain logging for future audits. Uh, one of the key advantages of GTS license management over the deprecated foreign trade and functionality in EC is the ability to have your transactions automatically roll up to the proper license. Uh, this ensures that you get all your regulated products assigned to the proper license. And you're immediately aware of any transactions for which uh, no required license exists. And also importantly, you can do that without having an impact on the speed of your ordering process. And in fact, uh, it'll speed it up significantly. Okay, so there's uh, three main types of licenses. Yeah. The DSP-5 is the most common, and this is an application and the resulting license for the permanent export of unclassified defense articles and the related uh, and related unclassified data. Uh, this license is also used for authorization for the employment of a foreign national in the United States when those employees will have access to ITAR-controlled technical data. And it's also the vehicle used for applying for agreements. The DSP-73 is the application and license for the temporary export of unclassified defense articles. Um, this license can be used for specific end users and public trade shows. 
However, if there's demonstrations or marketing information that will exceed public domain knowledge, then a DSP-5 is also going to be required and technical data is not authorized under the DSP-73. Uh, the DSP-61 is used for temporary import of defense articles into the U.S. Uh, U.S. goods that were sold to a foreign owner that are being returned to the U.S. for overhaul, repair, or upgrades. Um, foreign manufactured defense articles for trade shows and demonstrations are also going to require this type of license. As part of our license application, uh, supporting documentation will need to be provided. Uh, these are some examples of the documents that you may need to provide. And uh, here's what this uh, DSP-5 form looks like. Uh, if we go down here, we can see some, a list of some of the optional documents that we may need to provide, uh, stuff like brochures. Uh, and if we go further down, we'll see some of the fields that we need to uh, be able to capture in order to submit this application. So some of these things are already going to be part of the, G the GTS system, like you'll have uh, the country of destination, the port of exit, uh, you'll be able to maintain your uh, business partners in GTS and uh, set up uh, business partner types to use uh, when we need to provide that kind of information. Uh, so just down here, we'll need to provide stuff like the source of commod uh, commodity, uh, foreign intermediate consignee. Um, so all of that will come uh, from your GTS master data. Uh, the same thing for your line items. Uh, this will be in your material master. Um, and uh, we'll already have classified that according to USML. So all of that will be able to pull over into this application. Now, uh, some of that uh, is already part of GTS, but uh, there's some additional data that we do need to capture. Uh, those are some things like the DDTC registration code, um, like your applicant type, um, just, just a couple of extra fields that aren't normally part of the GTS. Okay, so now that we know uh, we need a license to export a product, okay, so how are we going to go about applying for it? Uh, the DDTC has a fully electronic defense export licensing system to facilitate this called DTRADE in which they receive and process defense export authorization requests submitted by any U.S. person who is a defense trade registrant. Uh, all manufacturers, exporters, and brokers of defense articles must register with DDCC. Um, and even if you're not planning on importing or exporting, uh, if, you, if you're dealing with these kinds of articles, you still need to register with them. Uh, DDTC also anticipates that uh, most export licensing submissions will be uh, via D-Trade in the near future. So submitting applications traditionally to D-Trade requires a user to manually key in relevant data, and that opens up the room for error, and it also costs time. Um, so we've seen some of the risks and challenges to maintaining regulatory compliance and how GTS helps with them. Uh, the one key piece of information that we're missing, however, is uh, our ability ability to submit, process, submit and process license applications directly from GTS. Uh, and this is where Crypt Connect for D-Trade comes in. So we're leveraging the already powerful tools of GTS, but now we can sign and submit license and agreement applications directly to D-Trade. Uh, we'll use GTS master data to increase the accuracy of the applications, and we can utilize templates and existing authorizations to reduce the time it takes to submit applications. Uh, we can also provide uh, better tools for our teams through, uh, through work queue, dashboards, and reports. And uh, we achieve this through a custom transaction to maintain DSP form data and submit D-Trade via a secure web interface, uh, along with all our supporting documentation attachments. Uh, Crypt Connect for D-Trade also allows us to receive a response back from D-Trade and automatically update the license in GTS so you can continue to use the compliance functionalities. So if GTS is already part of your compliance process, uh, being able to submit license applications directly from GTS uh, can greatly speed up your compliance workflow. You'll be able to avoid having to manually key in data or relying on third-party services. 
You'll be able to utilize your existing master data to increase the accuracy of your applications and create applications based on existing authorizations and templates. Uh, you'll also have access to customizable dashboards and reports that can be configured to your business's need. So the process of using our tool to submit applications begins with creating a GTS license and applying the proper information, such as partners for the partner types in the application and items that are going to appear in the application. Um, we then uh, enrich this data with the additional fields needed for the application to be submitted. Then we can uh, review the application and submit it when, when it is complete. So DTrade will respond with the status of the application, and then the license of GTS will be updated to reflect that. Uh, the majority of information is going to come from GTS business partner material master data. So this will improve the, the accuracy of our application. Um, existing license templates can also be used to pass along common data to expedite the application process of common applications. So a compliance team member uh, will enter the additional information needed and then upload the attachments to be sent as supporting documentation. Uh, the application will pass along a secure web interface to DTrade for processing. So this tool is built on top of compliance management for GTS, and it heavily leverages the SAP ecosystem to better fit into your existing processes and improve your IT compliance efforts. Uh, the key piece here is the secure web interface, uh, which uses uh, SOAP messages with attachments. Okay, so now we're gonna show you a quick demo of our tool by simulating creating a license application and submitting it to DTrade. Okay, so we're going to start in our uh, customizable um, license cockpit. Uh, here we can kick off the application process and access customizable reports. So the first step in this process is to create a, a standard GTS license. And we're going to use the template feature in GTS. Uh, so we'll fill in the legal regulation license type. And then we need to have the agreement reference. Uh, and then we're going to select our template. So this is going to pass along uh, some uh, values from the, the, the previous application, uh, such as the business partners and items. So we can use this to expedite our license creation process. Okay, so now that we have a license created, uh, we can go in and add our additional data. Uh, th these are some of the fields that we saw earlier. Um, the other thing we're going to need to provide to DTrade is uh, some supporting documentation for the application. So we can just uh, upload our documents. Uh, that'll upload it to GTS. And then uh, now we can uh, review the data. So here's a customizable report with the data that we're about to send. And um, after we've checked everything uh, and made sure it looks good, and if we have the proper authentication, then we'll, we'll be able to sign submit this to DTrade over a secure web interface. So our license is going to be updated to submitted status in GTS. And then when DTrade responds, which could take a couple of days, uh, it'll be updated to the appropriate status. Uh, so it'll be uh, ready to go uh, for use within GTS. Uh, we also have some common reports available to search licenses and messages, but we can also configure additional reports that your business may need. Um, his report just to, to view out license statuses. So here, for example, uh, we can see this has a, a GTS status of six, which means it's an expired license. Uh, this one has a the status of four, it means it's active and ready for use. Um, yeah, so this concludes uh, the demo portion of our presentation. Uh, so now we're going to open it up for questions. Thank you, Luis, for presenting that demo. Um, if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to type them into the panel 
right now. Um, also, we do have our contact information listed here. So um, if anyone does have questions following the webinar, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and we will be sure to get back to you with your uh, answers. So I'll, I'll go ahead, um, please, and it looks like we already have some questions in. Um, the first question is, are electronic submissions made by the tool as secure as those made using? Uh, sorry, let me repeat that. Are electronic submissions made by the tool as secure as those made using the D-Trade portal? Um, so uh, if you're applying the, the proper security protocols for your SAP implementation, uh, it'll, it'll be just as secure. As if we're going to be sending encrypted data over this web interface. Okay, perfect. Um, the next question is, how is supporting documentation attached using the tool? Uh, so, so we saw that on our demo. Uh, we, we can upload uh, PDFs, and I think we have up to 35 uh, megabytes is, is our data limit. And uh, this gets passed through the interface uh, to D-Trade as well, so they will receive those uh, doc documents you upload. Okay, great. Uh, we have another question. Um, how is the submission electronically signed in the tool? Um, so for this to happen, there's a couple of prerequisites. Uh, um, so you need to be registered with a DDTC uh, beforehand, and then you also need to have a, an ACES digital certificate. So these are required already for the, the normal process, but uh, if, you have them for, uh, if you have them for this, um, we'll have a, a special security role in GTS for people that have those. And according to this rule, you, you'll be able to, to sign and submit uh, through GTS. Perfect. Um, another question here is, how do I monitor what has been submitted and what's been received back, approved, or rejected? Um, so we, we can check on the actual license itself in DTS. Uh, there's a couple of status types, um, and those do get uh, updated automatically as we receive responses back from D-Trade. Um, but we can also uh, set up reports. So we saw in the demo one, uh, one uh, quick status report, but the, we, we can have a number of reports that'll be able to, to track um, these different statuses. Okay. Another question here is, how is the information validated in the tool so that I know when I submit that there are no errors? Um, the, the last step of the process it involves a, someone uh, I guess visually ver uh, verifying it through the preview. And uh, since most of this data is going to come from mass data, uh, so it, it would have already been uh, vetted at some point. Uh, we do have some, uh, um, I guess, some validation uh, on, on things like syntax, you know, some, some standard stuff, but we can also configure uh, special rules that, that may be needed to, for any key pieces of data. Okay. Uh, what's the process for changing or canceling a submission using the DTrade tool, or maybe the using the crypt print? Connect for D-Trade tool. Uh, so right now, this has to be done directly in D-Trade in the D-Trade portal uh, uh, for the time being, at least. Uh. Okay. Uh, um, now we do have. Let's see, a couple more that have come in. Um, also, can we use the GTS licenses to submit other forms for? For example, BIS dual use, or is this functionality only for IPAR related licenses? Uh, yeah, this this uh, particular product is only for ITAR related licenses to to D Trade. Um. Okay. And one other question in here is: Is a digital certificate still required to submit the applications at it? as it is when logged on to D-Trade directly? 
uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, we still need that ACES digital certificate uh, that, that we just talked about earlier. Okay, perfect. Uh, those are the only questions that we have in here. Oh, wait, we did just receive a question. Yes, we will. To everyone who attended the webinar, we will send out a recording and um, a copy copy of the presentation. Um, so we should have that to you by end of today. Um, if not, uh, if not by the end of today, we'll definitely have it to you um, first thing tomorrow morning. Um, I think that concludes the Q&A portion of the webinar. Um, again, just wanted to thank everyone for attending. Um, please feel free to reach out to us with any further questions or if you just want to set up a one-on-one -on -one dem demo or um, maybe discuss some of the customizations that we could potentially do for uh, for your company. Well, Louise, thanks for presenting, and um, everyone, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.